improving the lives of animals. Hey, Sally. Come here, Sally. How's my baby, huh? It's been a long road for Sally. A year-old Saluki pup found wandering months ago in the Kuwaiti desert with a missing foot. You want to go for a walk? Her injuries were so severe that doctors recommended amputating her leg. Come on, Sally. But Dr. Eric Egger of Colorado State University's veterinary school thought she'd be a perfect candidate for his prosthetic work on dogs. Come on, Sally. Got to go to work. She's shown us a lot about uh, wanting to use legs, I tell you that. She pushes and every chance she gets, she'll find something to go up so she can get that leg to the ground. And then she really pushes off with it. We could remove the leg, but it certainly looks to me like she's volunteering to help, uh, you know, to give us some knowledge. Until now, amputating a limb and letting dogs get by on just three legs was standard operating procedure. But, it looks like what happened but these days, the cutting edge research off. is helping animals like Sally. Sally, you ready? Why don't you get up and walk around for a minute, huh? Sally's Sally. new prosthetic is an interim step to encourage her to use her disabled leg. Okay. So you're gonna just slide that in gently. Okay. Then you've got your suspension and rotation. So her knee moves good, her yep. hip moves good. Yep. You ready? Once she builds up some strength in her leg, she'll be considered for a more radical treatment, a prosthetic foot attached directly to a titanium rod that's implanted in her leg bone. Let's see you come up this. I like that when you came up that. Prosthetics are saving lives and limbs for animals around the world. When Motala, a Thai elephant, had her foot blown off by a landmine, surgeons gave her a prosthetic. Stumpy, a kangaroo who lost her hind leg in the wild, lived a long life with a springy carbon fiber limb, much like those used by amputee human runners. Oh, that was a very nice one. There you go, very nice. Winter, a rescued Florida dolphin who lost her tail in a crab trap. One, two, three, perfect. Today, she swims with a side-to-side -side motion like a shark. But she may someday be able to jump and play like other dolphins, when she's fitted with her new prosthetic tail fluke. Um, let's get him cleaned up and let's get him fitted. I mean, I want and each him, breakthrough is inspiring others. On this thing. Yeah. Perhaps the most revolutionary work in the area of animal prosthetics is that of Denver, Colorado veterinary surgeon Dr. Bob Taylor and his colleagues at VCA Alameda East Hospital. 37 years of uh, being a veterinary surgeon, I've just seen so many animals that uh, have either suffered needlessly or we weren't able to adopt modern technology. And, and in the last, well, in, in my lifetime, that's changed. We've been able to take current, contemporary, state-of-the-art technology and use it for the betterment of animals. Scout, who got hit by a car, is one of several dogs with customized porous metal rods in their legs. Bone and soft tissue grow into the implants and anchor them. Painful skin irritations and infections from socket prosthetics are therefore eliminated, and animals may even be able to sense their foot through the bone. This was Scout's initial injury on the right leg where the distal feet had been ground away in the pavement. In our planning process, we planned on amputating him about right here uh, through his distal tibia, which we did. These are our post-operative films showing the implant. This is up inside of the bone. This, the bone comes down and it resides in this collar, and then the skin comes down and is attached down below right here. So this is his uh, post-operative leg immediately after the surgery. It's trial and error. Basically, his knee needs to be sitting about like this anyway. But well, prosthetist well, Ben Blakey, far, I mean, an amputee himself, hopes that prosthetics that attach to implants will give patients better mobility and more energy. All of a sudden, you have a leg that's actually a part of your body. You, you get a walk, and you don't have to worry about the leg rubbing a sore on your leg because it's actually held there. Uh, and your energy expenditure is way down, so then you can go hike farther. Uh, so if we can also change this over to work with humans, then 
how much further are we ahead? Okay, come on, Sally, let's go, let's go. Sally is just beginning the journey that will lead to her implant. Let's go. Ready? In a gate laboratory, her doctors analyze how she's walking on her new limb. She's touching it, but she's not bearing any weight on it. She's using it for balance, not for propulsion. So our goal is to get a prosthetic that she will use for propulsion. They'll play with it and try different foot attachments and lengths until they get it where the machine says she's bearing the most weight. So that's just universal. Sally's prosthetist, Martin Kaufman, envisions a day when advances in technology will allow two- and four-legged animals the flexibility to run, jump, play, and feel whole again. So when we get to learn how best to use that terminal device with an implantable uh, prosthetic, uh, that technology opens so many doors for kids, for adults in the human world. Not to have to deal with the socket. Just click on a leg and out you go. Okay, Sally, come on, let's go. Come on. What I'm excited about is return to function because when I see Sally running around in the mountains and I do see her when she jumps over logs and she puts her leg to the ground, she wants to use it and play and function better. And that's what I'm hoping the prosthesis will do for us. Come on, baby, let's go. Let's go walk on it a little. You're my dog, aren't you? You're my puppy. And that's it for World Report. I'm Paul Beban. Have a good night.